Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. You may have seen not too long ago my setup of the XP15000 from Epson. And the reason for this was because it was one of those printers that really did not work very well for us refillers. But then again, all of a sudden we realized that, hey, these are the easiest to refill cartridges in the world. Epson really messed up here and he gave us cartridges that you simply hold upside down and dribble ink onto the exit port just like you do with the Canon Pro 10 and the Pro 300 utilizes that type of cartridge now it's a great little printer the only thing lacking is a scanner it has a capacity of 13 inch wide media so that's wonderful and it produces wonderful prints now Currently, you can run it on a special type of firmware. It is a chipless firmware, so the chips are no longer an issue because really in the US, this printer is more or less locked. And so by installing this firmware, you'll be able to just print. Your levels will always show us full. All you have to do is be very careful and always top off your cartridges in a regular basis. But you guys may have been looking behind me Back here we happen to have an Epson Eco Tank 8550. Now the difference between the XP15000, even with that special firmware, and the Eco Tank 8550 is that that Eco Tank printer does not utilize chips. And each channel of ink, in other words, it doesn't even have cartridges per se. It has tanks in place tanks with a front transparent window that uses up to 70 milliliters of ink how long will that last you probably a very long time it also comes with a scanner that's a slightly larger capacity than your standard letter size scanner so we're going to be looking at that a little bit later but at this point i'm not setting it up yet what i want to do is provide you with a suggestion now I have not cracked open that box yet and on top you see all kinds of different accessories and those are offered by a gentleman here that I always provide the link for his eBay store these printers come with a user replaceable waste ink cartridge and that is amazing because that will allow you to continue using that printer of course assuming no mechanical issues you know crop up in the future normally a printer whose waste ink pads go full by its counter it's kind of a guess you either have to reset it with special software or send it in to have the pads physically replaced and if it's an older epson printer you may even be able to bypass the pads and basically re thread if you will the tubes that carry that waste ink to the pads outside into a bottle but if you have a user replaceable cartridge of waste ink that is that's no longer an issue so this printer has that the xp15000 as well and so my friend can provide you with replacements either you replace the chip either you replace the cartridge itself with a third-party version which is absolutely perfectly working unit or you can reset the chip and just reuse it once or twice it has that much more capacity they short change you folks they go full by the indication from the chip long before the cartridge physically needs to be exchanged so a lot of different support uh, material will be provided by Rick Johnson and he is the owner of a eBay store and again he will provide you with everything you need to be able to continue using that printer or the XP15000 or I believe even a, a Canon M620 I believe it was 
something around that area there. And so these printers will continue to provide service for you simply by having replacement waste and cartridge. And so not only will you save money, but you will keep your printer going and going and going now. This is going to be part one of a multi-part video. It's going to be one long video, but I will subdivide it with titles, part one, two, three, and so forth. I don't know how many parts it's going to take, but I'm going to cover important pre-installation things you need to look at before you even crack open that box. Normally, you will get a CD with the installation software that will include the driver and other miscellaneous software they may want you to install. Uh, in the case of an 8550, it's okay to continue to upgrade the firmware. No problem. There's no chips. Okay, there's no chips. The printer has no idea whether you are loading OEM ink or some other ink. Even Kool-Aid, it doesn't really care. There are no chips. You will visually see the levels of ink remaining on each of the six channels. Now, the ink palette, if you will, is composed of one pigment black. I assume it is probably a matte type black, or it could be a photo pigment black. We don't know yet. I'll be testing that when I begin to print on matte photo paper. And then you have your typical gray, photo black, cyan, magenta, yellow. And that's basically it. Five colors. And then you have that pigment black. The other five will be dye based. Now, why don't you have a light magenta or light cyan? The reason behind that is you really don't need it as you have a gray. The same thing with the XP. 15,000. There are no light versions of magenta and cyan. You have gray and that comes into play to allow you to create very gradual transitions in that realm, that cyan and that magenta area of the complete color spectrum. Now, since you get a CD with these printers, I would suggest that you forego installing your driver from the CD because it could be out of date already. So I suggest you go to the Epson site. In this case, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate what you need to do. I'll walk you through. I haven't looked at it yet. I'll just explore it with you guys right now. Again, this will be part one before we even begin to install. Of course, locate an area where your printer is going to sit. This is not a light printer. It's kind of semi-heavy so you don't want to be moving it around unnecessarily so we're going to go ahead and take a peek at the epson site right now all right so as you can see we are in the epson website and of course shaquille o'neal who has been promoting and doing commercials on this family of printers the ecotank series big man himself but let's go ahead and go directly to support and then printers here we will enter EcoTank or ET8550. And you should do this with any printer that you installed. Forgo using the CD. It may indeed have out of date software. And so, in order to get your correct driver sets or other applications, the site will detect your operating system. If it makes a mistake, then you can manually choose it yourself by simply clicking on this little down arrow. But this is what we are using. We're going to go ahead and click on the driver. Now, you can download the combo unit. It's small, but basically it acts as a downloader, which then downloads whatever software you choose to install. So we'll go ahead and click on download and download that one. Again, you also have the ability to just download the driver the scanner driver, because remember it comes with a scanner. Remote print driver, this is good because it allows you to print directly from your mobile device, whether it's iOS or Android type device, you can print directly from it. Now, if you go to utilities, you have other softwares here that you can install, other types of tools. 
I'm not sure I want to install any of these at this point, so we're going to go ahead and omit those. So simply that is it. You just download the driver. You can have frequently asked questions. Again, right here is a lot of information you may want to access, and that's up to you. Your manuals are located right here. You can download those as you wish. There are videos included as well. Uh, support uh, usage in ink and paper. That might be interesting, but we're going to go ahead and do our own exploration ourselves. All right, so that is it. Make sure you get your latest software and don't worry about updating your firmware because as I stated, this printer does not utilize chips. So that will not be an issue any longer. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so that is what I suggest you do. Do not really install from the CD because it may be an older driver and you'll end up updating anyway. So always go to the Canon or Epson site and download the latest drivers and the applications. Now, it's getting dark tomorrow in the morning. I will go ahead and begin the installation of the printer itself. We'll go through everything. We're going to take a close look at the installation guide. And again, this requires loading of ink one at a time, 70 milliliters of ink. So be aware of that. It's not just like installing a cartridge and you're done. You're going to be by gravity feeding 70 ml of ink per channel on a special tipped type bottle. Now you may be already asking, well, Jose, what about third party products? Well, think about this. Unlike regular cartridges that will cost you from 18 to $20 for probably only like 14 or 15 at the max milliliters of ink, you're getting 70 milliliters of ink for about $18 from Epson, directly from Epson. And you are loading that amount of ink in its OEM, okay? So how can you pass that up? How would you even consider using a third-party dye ink product when you can get it? Basically, rock bottom prices, $18 for 70 ml. Now that's a little bit higher than equivalent third-party dye inks. You get about maybe 120 ml for about $14. I would rather use Epson's inks in this case. It's going to last you so long anyway that you will not be you know, having to reload that often. Now, if you still insist, the only one that I would suggest you say consider using a third party equivalent or replacement would be for the photo pigment black or the matte pigment black. I don't know which one it is. I'll have to ask uh, Precision Colors to see if he knows what that particular black ink is. Whether it's photo, which is a glossy pigment black, or whether it's matte, which will be you know non-glossy and it can be utilized to print on fine art matte papers, which is what we're looking forward to do. All right, so that is it for now. It's going to be a great adventure. Here's what I'm planning to do. After installation, Okay, we will proceed to then run every test that you need to run to ver basically certify your printer. That means we're going to run a nozzle check, we're going to run a head alignment, and then after that we're going to print what? Our standard evaluation image. We're going to be using QImage for this. I want to make sure that the driver is actually set to ICM color mode. That means that if I happen to load Epson paper on it is going to link it literally to the corresponding ICC profile. I don't know what profiles are included in this installation package, but we will see. And so that's what you do. You print that evaluation image either manually in Photoshop or Lightroom, setting the driver to color mode ICM. That means that if you have premium luster, it's going to be linked to premium luster. I should see profile. Simple. That's what you need to do. Now, if I decide to say create custom profiles, which are going to be coming, yes, I will be doing a lot of custom profiles. I will make those available for free on my Facebook group. They'll be located in the files tab. All you got to do is click on it and you will find a ton of downloadable stuff in there, including all of these standard images and test images 
that you should have on hand to test and evaluate your printer's performance. So yeah, that's coming up. Also, we're going to be doing lots of demonstration, different types of media. Uh, we'll do even uh, greeting cards. We'll see what this printer can really do. Then I will go ahead and really tax it by printing on paper that is not really designed for a nice fine art matte or semi-gloss like a burrito type paper. And we will push it. We'll push it to the limit and see what it can and what it cannot do. All right. We perform also scans. I'm sure it can also print on discs. So we'll test that as well. It can do a lot of things. I'm going to look at the driver to see what sizes it includes at standard sizes. Often than not, it will not include every single size that you want to print on. You will end up having to create a custom paper size. We will see. If this printer has square standard sizes, it will be fantastic for anyone out there who's a scrapbooker because they utilize square media. 12 by 12, 8 by 8, and so forth. The Canon new family of printers include those weird square sizes, by the way. All right, so that is it. We'll be back with part two, where we will be cracking that box open. So make sure you stay on and continue watching and follow step by step what I propose you do to install this printer. All right, see you later. Hello everybody and welcome back. I am recording on my regular video camera, not on the one connected to the computer. So it's gonna look a little bit different. I got incandescent lights on top and then uh, more cooler, uh, more daylight balanced lights. So it's gonna look a little bit odd, but we're gonna go ahead and unbox this baby. We'll proceed to see what it comes with. Then we'll set it up by removing all of the tape tabs. There's gonna be a ton of them, believe me. And then we'll proceed with loading the inks. After that, we will go ahead and install in the computer, connect the printer via USB. Uh, later on, I'm going to go ahead and set it up for Wi-Fi. And then we're going to go ahead and perform a few tests, culminating with a standard image print. Okay, so let's go ahead and proceed. We have limited quarters here, so this is a big one. So. Um, hopefully I'll be able to show you everything close up. Very stiff box. Wow. Okay. Hmm. This is going to be a little bit tough to uh, lift straight out of the box. We have a very large um, piece of plastic here. I don't know what that is for. Inside is a printed piece of uh, paper with a bunch of codes, a bunch of language codes. I don't think we'll need that at this point. We'll remove this and immediately I see that there is a uh, CD included. Remember what I said, download your own driver straight from the Epson site or Canon, depending what printer it is that you are using. That way you will be assured that you will get the most recent version of the driver. That is what we want, okay? We'll put this aside over here because we're not going to need that right now. What do we have here? Protective foam core. I'm glad this is difficult to remove because I want it to be that way. That means that it's being secured nicely. I'll throw those on the floor for the time being. What do we have here? Anything in here? No, nope, this is empty. This is merely uh, some kind of padding. Yeah. Same here. We don't want to throw away anything accidentally, of course. All right. And uh, let's see how heavy this puppy is. See if I can do it with my bad shoulder. 
I may have to put it on the floor and lift it that way. We'll see. Here we go. I got it. We'll get rid of this box. Lay it down. Like I said, we have limited quarters here, so bear with me. This will show you what it actually takes to do this. Inside are the bottles of ink. So we'll take those out and see if there's anything else on here. So here we have the bottles of ink in this little packaging here. Put those over here for now. We have to follow the instructions of how to set this thing up. Quite often you can just power it off and then while it is on you add the inks. We'll see. We'll see what it says we have to do. As you can see, a ton of tape. So I'm going to go ahead and gingerly remove this plastic lining. Put it in the box. And begin to undo all the tabs. Make sure you do that. And they are bright blue so you really can't miss them. on the screen here. You do have a nice big screen which is really a nice uh, positive uh, point about this printer. Okay. Real time folks so you see what it takes to do this. I don't want to speed anything up. And just as a, as a warning, when you send this off, if you ever have to send this out for servicing, yeah, make sure you tape everything similarly the way you see it now as a brand new unit because you want it to be fully protected during the shipment. Because you know, shipping companies, uh, yeah, they're not that careful. So, all right, so here's a scanner. We'll remove this one as well. And this one, it's a rather large scanner. It seems to be uh, eight and a half by 13. That's actually pretty good. Very good, all right. Uh, let's see, here we go. Oh, look at that. So here we have tape on the carriage assembly. Wow, there's tape everywhere. Apparently you better make sure there's one little piece of tape right here that was actually loose. Make sure you get everything out. You do not want to end up initially from the very beginning with a problem with something getting in the way. So I'm going to bring my lights a little bit closer here and you'll be able to see exactly what we are dealing with. Oh my gosh, look at this. I assume this is supposed to come out. Maybe, <laughs> who knows. We'll leave that here for a time being. This is probably the paper tray. Of course, more than likely, we're not going to be using this for common printing, uh, but instead for printing photos. But we'll also do a little bit of everything, obviously. Again, I don't know whether this yellow little caps are part of the system. I'm going to bring my lights a little bit closer. So this was located here. I don't think it has to do with anything. I'll leave these aside unless I see something on the instruction sheet that tells me otherwise. I'm not going to worry about it. Here we have, right here is our uh, waste in compartment. 
you just remove it, I believe, this way. Let me see. Yeah, slide it out, and it comes right out. There you go. That allows you, this is a very, very important feature on any printer. If it allows you to remove and replace that waste in cartridge, you never really have to worry about the printer going dead and requiring servicing or resetting of the ink levels. And in most cases, you better be able to sort of bypass the pathway to the internal pads, if it has internal pads, to an outside bottle. That will allow you to divert that ink that you're generating, the waste ink, and not continually soil and saturate more and more of those internal pads. By having one of these units, you can just basically replace it. I think we might be able to get more than one or two or three runs by resetting the chip, which is one of the accessories that I have available through Rick Johnson. We'll talk more about that when we get there. Let's go ahead and close this down for now. We'll put this aside. I'm going to go ahead and open up the instruction manual. It'll tell me what I need to do first. I don't think we'll be installing the driver at this moment. Leave that right here for now. Here is what everyone should actually look at. The instruction sheet. Very important. That's several of them. This is the warranty. So I'm going to bring this up close. Oh my goodness, how much more? Unpack. That's the first thing. This has to do with the... Well, this is in French. And this one is in English. So step one is unpack. Do not open the ink bottles until you are ready to fill the ink tanks. The ink bottles are vacuum packed to maintain reliability. They mean lifespan. Okay, by that. Remove all protective materials from the product. Lift up the scanner unit. Remove all protective material from inside the product. Caution, do not touch the areas shown inside the product. The printer ships with a transportation lock in the printing position. Do not move it from the printing position. Okay, we did not do that. Let's check again. Here's the printing unit right here. Actually, this contains the printhead as well as the dampers that will hold ink from these large containers here. So, we'll close it for now. Next, Connect the power cord to the back of the product and to an electrical outlet. Caution, do not connect to your computer yet. You can set up your product to print and scan wirelessly from your mobile device or computer using Epson Smart Panel application. To use the app, see setup from a mobile device on the back of this sheet. If you do not want to use the app for setup, then go to the next section. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, plug it in for power. I gotta find my power cable. And that is probably going to be located here. I was looking everywhere for it. All right. As you can probably see, one, two, three, four, five color inks, including a photo black. And then we have your regular pigment black unit and then our power cord. We will take these out. I'm going to put these on top of my XP15000 until we need them. Here is our power cord. That can go over there now. Whenever you see these uh, set of videos online on YouTube, they go very quickly. 
this is live. This is real time, folks. Showing you how long it takes an old man like me to do this. I'm going to unwrap the little wire here. We'll plug in the printer. Let me see where the power plug is in the back. Must be underneath here. Here we go. No, that's USB. Here is the power plug. No, that is network cable. Huh. There you go. It has network capabilities as well. So that's good. It's a good thing to know. I wish I had a large area to do this. Unfortunately, I do not. So. Here we go. Here's our power supply plug. Make sure it is securely attached. And I'm going to bring it and plug it into my power strip here. And throw something on the floor, of course. <laughs> what did I just drop? some cartridge holders. All right, so we have power plugged in. Now, fill ink tanks. Keep the bottles out of reach of children and do not drink the ink. Do not drink the ink, folks. Don't do that. Bad for you. It'll color up all your insides. Okay, note, this product requires careful handling of ink. If ink spills, wipe it off immediately with a damp towel to avoid permanent stains. If ink gets on your clothes or belongings, it may not come off. Got a white shirt on today. Let's see how clean I can uh, remain. Note, Epson cannot guarantee the quality or reliability of third-party inks. I knew they were going to throw that in. I was just kind of waiting for it. Use the ink bottles included in the printer to set up the product. Part of the ink will be used to charge the printhead. These bottles may print fewer pages compared to the replacement ink bottles. That's with anything. Any kind of printer that, especially those that have stationary cartridges, okay? Like the Epson higher end models, they have cartridges that do not move. They have to basically fill those empty ink lines and the internal head dampers with ink and also expel some of that ink to make sure that the printhead has been properly charged. You will probably use at least a third of your ink that way in most cases. All right, so Epson strongly recommends the use of genuine inks to ensure optimal print quality and performance. Well, here's the deal. These inks basically run for about $18 each. So, considering the fact that a cartridge that maybe holds 14 ml of ink will run you about that much, you're really getting a deal and you're getting OEM inks in this case. So, yeah, I would recommend in the case of the 8550, since your inks are going to basically last such a long time, it's, it's really affordable to just operate on OEM inks. The only ink that I would even come close to suggesting that you use as a third party choice would be the pigment black ink. And I'm going to be contacting Precision Colors to see what ink he recommends for that. Okay? All right, let's proceed. It tells me to uh, turn on the power button. Make sure that we do that. And here we go. I'm going to bring the camera closer. Okay, you should be able to see the screen here. Let me go ahead and see if I can tilt this. Yeah, sure can. And we have English. So I think that's what we're going to stick with. Uh, let's see. Note, if an error message appears, turn off the product and check that no protective material has been left inside the product and that the transportation lock is in the printing position. Hmm. 
Select your language on the LCD screen. Note you can change the setting later. Open the ink tank cover, then open the cap for the black. So I assume he means the, yeah, he is talking about the pigment black. So we'll leave that there. I hope you're able to see the internal area here. We're going to go ahead and open black. So they call the pigment black just black, and then they call the dye black a PB or photo black. So let's find our bottle. All right, so I have the camera closer to where we have to be. Be very careful and orient these keys correctly. Up and down or 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. And I think that's all you have to do. It's going to be kind of fed by gravity. We're going to keep an eye on this tank right here. We should be able to begin to see ink being uh, loaded. I already see a little bit of a... Uh, Increase, yeah, right there, we're at, right here. I can hear the ink coming in. We are about halfway up. I assume that once it reaches the top, that is it. So, I'll give it a little bit of extra time because I don't want to underfill it. Okay, I think you can barely see that the ink has reached the top. I don't see it rising anymore, so I can assume that this is now done loading. And there is no ink in it. Maybe a little wee bit in it. We'll go ahead and see if I can extract the last bit of ink. After all, this very, very expensive ink needs to be used up, right? Well, it's actually very, very low in cost and being OEM should give us some pretty good quality output. Alright, I think that's good enough. I feel a couple of drops inside there. We are pretty much done. Now, I don't know whether you can reload ink into these. I'll have to talk to Mike. The only one we are concerned with is this pigment black. The rest of them, no, you better load OEM. Now we have photo black right here. We'll proceed with each one of these. Crack it open. I'll have quite a mess on my floor to clean up. We will remove the little cap for photo black. We'll make sure that we have indeed photo black. We're injecting. Black is pigment black, folks. Okay, it's going to be called black. So make sure you get that straight. Do not mix the two. You'll have a hell of a time later on, believe me. So photo black, see that? That, that can be very, let me show you something that can be very confusing. That can be translated as pigment black, but it's really photo black. Noir photo. So we'll inject that. Now the pigment black ink is a little bit more costly than your dye based inks. So this one I believe goes for about $19. And we have ink beginning to rise. We'll prep the other one. The next one is going to be cyan. I'll get them all prepped. Cyan and magenta, and lastly, yellow. And when it comes time to top these off, I would suggest that you wait until you're near the bottom and then buy your new bottles, of course, have them already ready to be used and proceed with the same process. We are a little bit low here, so we're going to give it a little bit more time. Let me see. Yeah, there's a little bit of ink left. The beauty about this is a self-sealing 
loading mechanism. I think you can take that off. It seems to be something removable. Maybe, maybe, yes, maybe no. And then you'll be able to simply uh, refill your pigment black ink bottle with a third party proven good pigment black ink. Now, I don't know whether this is matte. I don't know whether this is a glossy black or photo black, pigment photo black. I do not know. So I'll have to ask to see what ink you would use because ideally you should be printing on matte media with a matte black ink rather than a photo black ink because it's simply not as dense. You will not get those nice deep um, D-Max or deep shadows. There's a little bit of ink left, but I think that's all it's going to take. I think we got cyan next. Again, folks, be very careful when you do this. Do not make a mistake. A mistake would be fatal. Okay? A mistake would definitely be fatal. Because it would require a complete flushing of the system. I don't think I can do that myself. So cyan goes into the cyan slot. Come on, baby, get in there. I think it goes one way only. There we go. And again, like I said, it's an automatic uh, gravity-fed system. I can see the cyan beginning to rise. And this is how you keep tabs on your ink levels. There is no indication on the driver. There's no chip involved. So you will be able to see, visualize the levels of ink yourself by simply looking at these little windows here. I can hear it gurgling in there. That's amazing how fast that goes in. And I think that's it for that. Next will be yellow. And let's talk a little bit about this uh, type of um, setup here. I got to get myself comfy here a minute. So think about this for a minute. Before, you would pay less for a printer, but a lot more for ink. This is kind of the other way around. You're paying at least almost $800 for this printer, but your inks are super low cost. Okay, So that is the difference between a, a normal, everyday type printer and one of these EcoTank units. Yellow to yellow. Ah, I can see the ink right here. Look at that. Look at look at it dropping here. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but I can just visualize it right here dropping. I see little air bubbles coming up. We'll be able to see once it reaches the bottom here. The next will be the magenta and then the gray. Again, do not confuse gray for black, folks. It'll be a catastrophic mistake, believe me. There's no way you can really back out of that one. The same thing, even worse with the colors, if you mix them up. There is no way you're going to be able to recover from that. I think that's all that's going to uh, flow in. There's a little bit of ink. I can see it right there. So they give you a little bit more ink than you actually need. That's it. It's not going to go anymore. Next. Magenta. So you can see how long this is taking. That way you know exactly what to expect. I can see the magenta beginning to enter the tank. Now, whether these inks match what OEM inks would be, say, for the XP15000 or, say, OEM inks for the uh, 1400 series, yeah, those were good inks, but you were paying through the nose for them. 
So if this is as good a quality, then you really cannot beat this $18. It's actually $17.95 or something like that. And you can get a complete set of five from Epson and then just buy your black ink separately. You may use up more black ink if you print on a lot of basically plain paper. Okay, or print, say, black and whites using matte media. Let's make sure we squeeze as much as we can. Yeah, let me show you here. You see there's a little bit of ink there. So do not throw these out because you'll be able to uh, add this later on. When it comes time to refill these, you should be able to add that extra ink. So, you know, my next purchase pretty much immediately is going to be to buy a set of these um, ink bottles from Epson. They have them available, and I believe they ship without any kind of uh, shipping costs. And this goes in only one way, folks, so make sure that you get that correct. We'll keep an eye out here for the gray levels. And there we go. I can hear the gurgling of the ink as it enters the tank. Now this tank will then feed the internal ink lines, which then will feed the print head dampers. And of course, expel a little bit of that ink out, and that will go immediately into our waste ink container. At that point, we we'll should be able to run your standard uh, nozzle check. We'll do a head alignment, and we will then proceed to install the driver. And after that, we will proceed to then print a standard image. That is the whole plan here. Now, later on, I'm going to be doing demonstration videos. Those will be separate and we'll be also generating lots of custom profiles with these things. Now let me tell you, uh, Precision Colors installed this on one of my live streams, but he decided from the very beginning to go with pigment inks all the way across. So he installed matte black here, photo black pigment ink here, and cyan, yellow, magenta, and gray inks. Um, apparently he already had the correct inks for it, or at least close enough, he had to generate some profiles in order to make it, you know, output as accurately as possible. But nevertheless, now he's printing with pigment ink on this baby. We're going to keep it with the dye ink as intended by the uh, manufacturer because we want to see what it can do. I will enjoy printing on some papers with a shine that will require dye inks. Uh, actually, dye inks excel at that more than uh, pigment-based inks. All right. I believe we are done. Let's go ahead and close the lid. Go back to our instruction sheet. Basically, it just told us to do exactly what we just went through. We just closed the lid. Now it says, uh, follow the instructions on the LCD. We're going to close this lid down. It's telling us to load some paper. So we'll go ahead and get some paper ready. See the instructions below for loading paper in cassettes one and two. So we're gonna open the door. Cassette one is located, uh, let's see. Oh boy. Oh, we forgot one piece of tape. Wow. And that is completely hidden, folks. Completely hidden. Hidden. Look at that. How could you see that? It is very important to keep an eye out for any of these little bits and pieces of tape. It's attached to a little bit of a um, piece of foam. There we go. Oh boy. 
Here we go. Now we can open the tray. You see that? That's why. And we're going to open this up. Max width. And we will insert some paper. And I think all you have to do at this point is to close that. All right. I'm glad I found that. Otherwise, it wasn't really listed on the instructions, by the way. So the next page basically tells us to load the paper. Uh, if you want to load some uh, glossy material, you would load it or paper that has a coating, let's just say. You load it facing down because it's going to make a U-turn. It's going to make a U-turn as it comes out and is uh, printed upon. So you need to have the printable surface down. Otherwise, it's going to print on the back of the paper and you will not like the results. Okay, so now it actually is telling us to um, install the application. Hmm. We'll do that on the computer. So if you are using a Mac or your computer does not have a CD DVD drive, an internet connection is required to obtain the product software. Now we did that yesterday in our preliminary video. We'll go ahead and uh, install that particular driver. All right, the next step, if you have a CD drive and you decide you want to use a CD, you will then insert that and work directly from that. But we're going to go ahead and use the installation file that we downloaded directly from the Epson website. Make sure your product is not connected to your computer. Windows, if you see a found new hardware screen, click cancel and disconnect the USB cable. All right, so insert the product CD, Windows only, or download and run your product software package for the latest software. Visit blah, 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 blah. It gives you all of the sites. Follow the instructions of the computer screen to run the setup program. When you see the select your connection screen, select one of the following. Wireless connection, in most cases, the software installer automatically attempts to set up your wireless connection. If setup is unsuccessful, you may have to enter your network name or password. We're going to go ahead and connect that via USB because we're going to be printing large files and I want the more direct data feed to the printer. Or you can use a wired network connection as well. And you can set it up from your mobile device but we're not going to do that. Now I want you to pay attention here. There was a reference to a transfer lever and that is actually here. See, the instructions were not perfectly clear about that. It should be in the forward position. You see the rotational arrow here. For printing, it needs to be like so. For shipping or moving, then it has to be like so. That means that printhead is locked. It cannot move from left to right. You see an icon of a truck, a cart, and someone carrying the printer. So for printing, make sure that it is located in this position. That's what they were referring to in the instructions, but they really didn't basically tell us what we needed to do or what the lever actually was. All right, let's go ahead and close this. Now, as you can see on the setup screen, we have English as our language. We have to actually accept that. Now, we can either use our phone to scan the QR code and proceed with installation from your phone. That means you're not going to use any computer. You're not going to use anything else to print with. We don't want to do this. We're going to proceed without the application. It's going to charge the system now for us. The only bad thing that could happen is that we get an error indication, but you know, that's probably not going to happen, hopefully. Now be aware that we have a rear feeder here for paper and there is indeed see another piece of uh, oh boy so many of these tabs so make sure you scour 
I mean scour the printer for any possibilities of tabs still remaining. All right, so it says see the start here bundle with the printer. Wow, that is very cryptic. Or on website to complete installation. Press OK for five seconds. Make sure that the all color inks, and wow, the English is not really good. <laughs> Make sure that all the color inks are filled up to the upper line on the ink tank. Select the start button to start ink charging. Do not load paper until initialization is complete. Okay, this is going to take about seven minutes. We will not make you sit here through seven minutes. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this. Okay, so it's looking like the initialization was completed without a problem. Initialization is complete. Some ink is absorbed into the maintenance box. You may see some black parts on it. I love it. But it is normal. Proceed with the print adjustment. So we're going to go ahead and press that. It says align the printer to get the best print quality. Yeah, we'll do that now. Let's go ahead and move the camera out of the way in a more um, better point of view so we can see exactly what's going to happen. We press adjust and print. Okay. Load A4 paper or letter size paper to nozzle check pattern. You gotta love the English. The tray opens up automatically and we should begin to see a nozzle check proceeding to be printed. I hear it printing so I assume that the paper tray that I loaded earlier was done correctly. And here we have it and it is perfect. Wow. You cannot beat that. Perfect nozzle check right off the bat. Not bad. Now. So you guys know there is some information here. It's telling me that there has been zero borderless color pages or black and white pages, zero with border color or black and white, and it says blank pages, total pages printed zero, blank pages zero, first time printing, and it does not have a date here. I may have to actually set up a date on the screen. I had to do that with my Pro 1000. Now here is something very important. The serial number is located right here. So this is always going to be in your nozzle check, this information. Firmware. This is the firmware version. So you know which version the printer is running. If you see a different firmware on the Epson site, then there may be a new firmware available for it. Who knows how long this printer sat. In other words, when it was made it had the firmware installed and then shipped to a uh, distribution center and eventually to an office supply store. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and choose that we had a perfect nozzle check. Align print position to fix misalignment and banding. This, this language is totally off. What it means to say is to run a printhead alignment to make sure you don't have any banding adjustment. Perform five types of alignment in order. Load six sheets of letter size A4 plain paper into cassette number two. All right, let's do it.
I'm going to sit myself down and wait for this to finish. I don't know whether it's something that you have to do yourself or is, a, is it an auto head alignment? Possibly not. I'll probably have to make the uh, correction choices myself. Who knows? Like I said, the instructions really leave a lot to be desired, I have to say. Yeah, we're going to have to choose our own uh, quality. So the next one's going to be printed. So proceed to number two. Now we're going to have to examine this one. Right here it's saying, select a pattern that shows up no gap or dark line. Well, you can see what we got here. Let me take a close look at this with my eyeglasses off. There is a bit of misalignment here in number one. This is still misaligned, slightly misaligned, near perfect, this is perfect, and five and five are the perfect ones. Yeah, maybe five and four. So we will do plus plus to five, and then proceed to two, and we will pick number four as being perfect actually number five see it's very very difficult to see you really need to do this I recommend you do this on a glossy paper because it's going to have less um, what is referred to as dot game meaning that the ink tends to wick uh, it will be a lot sharper and you'll be, be able to examine this a little bit more accurately so I am thinking Gosh, there's hardly any difference between four and five. I'm going to pick five because it just looks a little tiny bit better. So plus plus to five and proceed. So now we're going to print the second alignment. Print. If this was a professional photo printing unit, it would do this automatically for you. But what this does is well, it will prevent banding, which is you know something you really do not want. And it'll be banding and not due to a nozzle problem. It'll just be a mismatch between the amount of the width of the ink pass and the width of the paper advance. When the paper advances more, you'll get a gap. When the paper advances a little bit less, you will get an overlap. So you can get a dark banding or you can get a light banding. We'll see what the next adjustment uh, looks like. Again, every one of these types of um, head alignments on every printer that I have owned has been different. As you can see, we have not installed the driver yet. so. We're working directly from the printer utilizing the built-in screen. As I install each ink, I went and pressed the button for the next unit, and so on, so on, so on, until we were done completely with the ink installation. But again, they don't explain that on the instructions, so I had to kind of come back and revisit what I was doing. Okay, here is the one that I'm used to using. We'll see what we got here. And again, it's not giving me any instructions yet as to how to analyze this. Oh, it's printing another one. Okay, we'll put this aside. Now you can see right here very clearly, big gaps right here. See. We're going to be looking at a block that contains absolutely no gap. And then those are the numbers that we're going to enter. So we'll leave this here for now. Wow, this is a really involved uh, process for this particular printer. Each printer is going to give you slightly different results. They cannot run that at the factory because they would have to install inks. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look. Row number one, 
and that would be number five number two that would be take my glasses off so I can see better up close that would be number three right here minus one and you can rerun this again if you if you make a mistake number row number three that would be number three as well this number four has a little line on it number four gap 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 number four has the least gap we're gonna pick it often it will not be perfect folks you will not be able to find a square that has absolutely no gap you choose the one with the least amount row number five number three row number six number four row number seven number three and the next page number eight number four that's your default row number nine actually number one is the very best one so we gotta go down to number one that's number nine let's get that straight and correct and the last one number two so row ten square number two All right, so now we're going to print number three and no through number five. Wow, this is never ending. Jeez. But you can see how tedious this is. Again, they don't, they don't tell you this on some of these setup videos. They show you that, you know, they ran the uh, alignment and you're done. Magically, in a matter of seconds. That's not the case. It takes a lot more than just a few seconds. But this is imperative that you run this because otherwise you're going to have problems later on. Alright, so we got another vertical type alignment and we're going to look for the best one in row number one. No, 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 no. Yes, that's the closest one. Seven. Alright, row number two. Wow, none of them are perfect. But the one with the least problem seems to be number five. And one more, four to five. We are at number four, my gosh. Oh. I've seen this type of uh, alignment before. So we're looking for overlapping bands or a gap between bands. This is going to be difficult. Like I said, this does not really work very well with uh, a regular plain paper. But you can see, maybe you can, maybe you cannot. I can see it. This is clearly overlapping, that one. So we're going to look, see there's a difference, slight difference in the density. So we are going to look at this and try to analyze it. I see a gap there. I see a gap there. That's pretty close. That's perfect. That's perfect. Number four. And that's the apparently the uh, default setting. The last one, folks. This is the very last one. Let's go ahead and do that. See, I could have just you know done this behind your backs and just tell you run the uh, head alignment and then you would not really know what to look for this is what you are to be expecting so similar one this is possibly only using black ink so we're going to look for the one with the least overlap yeah it's very difficult to see 
very difficult to see, but I believe this is it right here. That's a gap, that's a gap, that's a slight gap. Eh, this may be, if, if I could choose three and a half, that's what I would choose. Let's choose number three. That, my friends, is done. We now have a complete selection of screen options. Let's go ahead and do that. We have a copy button that allows us to use the scanner and basically copy. We have a print photos and you can basically do collages, single prints and so forth. Scan. You're going to scan and then save from the computer and uh, or the cloud and there's more options here or WSD you're gonna go ahead and look at various print options various copies okay all of this stuff is going to be available in the driver we can actually print on DVDs and CDs as well maintenance this is great because if you need to run a cleaning cycle you can do it directly from the actual printer and not necessarily from your computer let's look at settings print counter is there so we should be able to have you see that we have a total of seven prints three in black and white and four in color again remember we were printing with color as well as black ink basic settings LCD brightness all of this stuff it's got a lot of uh, language we might be able to do the uh, date later on and that's all up to you if you want to go ahead and continue doing that uh, network settings web service settings, file sharing setup, camera print settings good lord a lot of this stuff I will not need to uh, run now if you have your printer set up for Wi-Fi you can do an automatic version of the or update of the firmware but let's just go ahead and install this printer next we're going to link it to our computer okay so we'll do that next and then I will go ahead and print something like a photo how about that all right, we're back in a little bit. All righty, we have arrived at the point where we're going to install the driver. And if you remember on the first part of this very long video right now, we looked up at the Epson USA site for the EcoTank 8550 installation bundle. In other words, this will allow you to connect and download simultaneously whatever you wish to install. It is kind of a, a bundle type software. So let's go ahead and proceed to do that. Our printer is on. We already loaded the inks. We charged the system. We printed a nozzle check. We proceeded to do a very, very intense and long, arduous head alignment. And hopefully that will give us absolutely no banding in our resulting photographs. But now we have to install the driver. And so we're going to go ahead and do that with the file that we downloaded yesterday. We'll proceed to do that. Then we will connect the printer via USB to our computer. And it will be recognized. We have to do it at a specific point during the driver installation. So let's proceed. All right, so here you can see my downloads folder. This is the file that we downloaded yesterday. We're going to go ahead and run this as an administrator. Right click. I do this all the time. It is just a little bit of a safer mode to use. Yes, and then it's going to proceed to begin the installation procedure. This file contains the installer to obtain everything you need to use your Epson EcoTank Photo ET8550. Click OK to continue. OK, so let's go ahead and see what we need to do here. We're going to accept this very, very long, like anyone ever reads this, right? Accept. 
select options. So here we're going to see what we have here uh, uh, being offered to us. Allow software usage information to be collected. Epson collects software uses information using Google Analytics. So you can choose whether to leave this off or on. Allow product usage information to be collected. Epson collects product usage information using the Epson customer research software. I don't care. Of course, I you know it's not an issue for me. Some people may want a little bit more privacy, and you can basically unclick those. Express product registration. Sure, we want that. Next. Thank you for choosing this Epson product. See the printed instructions for details on setting up the printer. Make sure your printer is turned on. We've already done that. We've already tested it. Now it's time to install the software that we need to run it from our computer. Have you finished refilling the ink tanks? Yes, we have. You click on yes right there. Setup. It is now downloading the printer. It is now downloading the scanner driver. Downloading the Epson Power Engage, and there's more, but I can't see it. Installing printer driver. We just let this do its thing. At some point, it's going to ask us to install the USB cable onto our computer, we'll do that. And that'll be the time where it will be uh, recognizing the actual printer and it's going to then add it to my other printers. Installing Epson Power Engage, whatever that is. All right, so here we go. It's going to connect. We can do that again later. I'm going to connect via USB cable at this point. Okay, so later on, I'm going to go ahead and run this connection here. But for now, we'll just go ahead and install with USB. Now we can connect our cable. You hear the little signal? is going to find it. We should get a next when a USB cable is connected. Setup proceeds automatically. It is doing that. All right, so here's what we're going to choose. All the software that we would like installed. And what the heck, let's just get everything. <laughs> Might as well, right? Software's updated. That will allow us to uh, keep uh, up to date as far as our new versions of the driver or firmware. Remember, we don't have to worry about firmware updates because we don't have chips to worry about in this printer. So printer driver, scanner driver, okay. We're going to download about 260 megabytes worth of uh, installers as well as the manual. Let's do it. While this is running, I want to go ahead and check my control panel and see if this uh, new printer has been installed and I can see it. Yes, Epson EcoTank 8550, and it has become my default printer. All right, we'll just kick back. I'm going to fast forward this. So you don't have to uh, be put to sleep waiting for this to happen. Let me slide this over. You might be able to see right here, Epson Eco Tank. And what is this? It's still being insta installed. So, user guide. Epson Photo Plus, Epson Photo Plus Tool, don't know what that is yet. Once I get this done and we proceed to do our standard image test, then I will be planning future videos, individual videos covering specific subjects and covering specific uh, 
tests and all kinds of things that we're going to be doing. And again, remember, we're going to be producing uh, custom profiles that I will make available for free in my Facebook group. There will all be for Epson papers as well as Red River papers and many other papers. Okay, so I will be working very hard the next couple of weeks uh, producing these uh, so-called ICC profiles. Now here is telling me print test page. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll look behind us. Let me go back to me. Should be able to see the printer coming alive back here. The tray is popping off. It's very dark in here. You get a light here. So that means it is definitely communicating. And it produced a test print. All right. So let me uh, hit next. Check functions. See what that does. And then finally we will finish. So it's probably checking uh, things in the printer itself at this point. Do not turn off print computer or printer or disconnect the printer from your computer until the firmware update is complete. So it's going to update the firmware. Let's go ahead and do that. Again, remember, we don't have to worry about this any longer. Not with this printer. If you are using a printer that you are refilling from Epson, be very, very weary, especially also Canon printers. Don't update the firmware unnecessarily unless it promises to fix a problem, an actual problem, because it may be backdooring you in uh, preventing you from running, say, reset chips on certain Canon printers, as well as some of the older Epson printers that you could indeed uh, use safe third-party products on. It, you may get blocked, in other words, so be very weary. Now, on an EcoTank printer or any of the Canon, I think it's Megatanks, they also do not use chips. No worries. Go ahead and keep up your uh, firmware updates up to date. All right, let's wait for this to finish. It's going to go ahead and restart the printer. It's got to reboot it. Because once you install a firmware, it has to reboot. Some of the Epson printers that allow you to install a chipless firmware work that same way. You need special software, a tool that is to install that chipless firmware. And then once it is successfully installed, you have to reboot your printer. Basically, turn it off and turn it back on. So we are at 72% right now. We didn't really have to do this. We'll see what happens. Let me see if anything is happening back here on the screen. Do not turn the power off. When the update is complete, the power will turn off and then on automatically. So it's telling me the same information that I read off here on the printer screen itself. All right, so I will just kick back and relax and see uh, what happens next. We were at 72 a little earlier, now 73. So I had to download that firmware, has to flash it into the computer's chip, 74% now. And I don't know, you know, these, these firmwares, they tend to, um, in the case of an EcoTank printer, it may be fixing something. It may be uh, taking care of a bug or something. It may be improving certain functionalities. Who knows? They're very vague about that. They don't really tell you. Now, if you didn't want to go through all of this, you can just download the driver by itself and install that. And if you do not need any of the other tools for, say, printing, this is a tool that will allow you to print directly from it rather than go through a photo editing program then by all means do that. You can download whatever you want specifically. Uh, but with the uh, so-called bundle installer, it just does that all the way for you automatically. We're at 75. Oh boy, I wish I had a cup of coffee right now with you guys. Hopefully uh, Q Image Ultimate has support for the 8550, meaning that it will set the driver at the correct 
color management settings, meaning that if I want to use a custom ICC profile for QImage, it will then basically turn off color management in the driver itself. And if I want to print with an Epson paper, then it will then choose that correct uh, profile for you as well. And it'll also, if you choose to just print with the driver itself, it will simply do that for you automatically. It will match the uh, paper that you're using to the correct matching ICC profile. You see during the installation of the driver, ICC profiles were installed in the uh, computer itself. So they are there to be accessed. All right, so now we're going to, I uh, see I got a new startup item detected. Yes, several of them. It should be ready. Oh, it, it went back to the regular menu. It's checking, still checking. All right, so here we can just go ahead and uh, enter my information and close that basically is it next so it is warranted now officially all right we are done folks let's go ahead and jump over to me and we're going to load some paper but first i want to go ahead and trim it so i'll be right back okay so now we are in qimh ultimate and I want to show you how I set this up. So I am running this paper right here. Epson Premium Luster Photo Paper. So what we have to do is in the QImage application itself, choose your printer. There it is among my other printers. Your Ultra Premium Photo Paper Luster is what's available. Let's see, there was really nothing else available there. So that's the closest one we have. Pick that. We're going to use that rear paper feeder by that. That basically means the one on top. There's also a manual feeder in the back, not that one, the rear feeder. There's many uh, feeders available. Cassette one, cassette one, borderless, two, borderless. Anyway, all kinds of different choices. And we're going to pick the rear paper feeder because we're going to manually feed that paper. Now, when you let the driver control color, as it is indicated here, it's going to link it to that profile. So basically, we're going to have a color managed print here. Let's check our properties in the driver itself. So let's see what this driver looks like. It looks very, very similar to the XP15000, folks. Very similar. Let's check out the maintenance, very limited maintenance, because you can run it directly from the screen itself on the printer. So let's go back. All right, so we want to look at our driver settings. So we're using letter size, eight and a half by 11. We're going to print in portrait mode, not borderless, ultra premium photo paper luster. Quality high, let's go to standard, just see what we get. Um, earlier, I did a bit of a test just a few minutes ago. Printing just something not important, and it took forever in high. So we're going to go ahead and use standard. Maybe that'll shorten the time, so I don't have to put you through such a long wait. Now, here in the more options, this is important. We're going to click on that, and then click on advanced. ICM. This is a setting you must use when you want to automatically link an Epson ICC profile with an Epson paper you have chosen in that menu right here, okay? You must do that. If you have it set to some other control, it will not link it automatically. It'll give you kind of an auto type print and it's not going to be optimal. It has to be ICM. Now, QImage will do that for you automatically. That's why it is set on ICM right now. All right, so let's get out of here. We'll go ahead and hit the print button and proceed. We'll get the progress report here, queuing up the image, and it will be sent to the printer. We're going to go ahead and switch over to full view. There we go. We should be able to hear the printer waking up. And right now we can just go ahead and close queue image. We will be checking out our progress here. 
It should print a little bit faster. There we go. It's coming out now. We're looking for a nice neutral result, folks. Remember, the standard image is what you gauge your printer's uh, output quality with. All right, it is done. Very nice. Oh my. Huh, look at that. Amazing. So, as you can see, the central is an electron scanning micrograph, and that is neutral. The strawberries look edible. You want to look at the skin tones. You want to look at these transitions to make sure there are no gaps, there are no bands or say abrupt changes in density as you go from fully saturated to black and from fully saturated to white you want a very gradual transition right here these colors are out of gamut folks they simply do not print correctly here from black to white and it does not change tonality let me aim it closer to the camera as you can see it is neutral throughout the complete range it's amazing. So, again, this is our first print. I got to switch over here. Let me give you a quick look again. Let me back up so you can see a good, nicely lit view of it. My lights are right here in there. So you can see everything looks the way I, I expected it to look. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a 13 by 19 and see how that works out. This will be really a good test. And we'll do a very taxing image. Remember that one I did before on that um, swellable surface paper? This one right here. We'll go ahead. That was on the 15,000. We're gonna get an, we're gonna go ahead and test it on the 8550. Let me get the paper ready. This is not quite a 13 by 19. This is actually a three, I believe. European A3. So we'll look up that paper size. We'll load it. Let me get Q image reopened here. How about something like this? Do you think the 8550 can handle that? I think it might be able to handle it without a problem at all. Let's go ahead and print that. We're going to keep it at the same uh, quality settings. Now, obviously, this is a very simple test. I'm using Epson paper, and I'm using ICM color mode, which is going to be a perfect match to the Epson uh, Ultra Premium Photo Paper Luster ICC Profile that it is installed right now because once you install the driver, it will simultaneously install the profiles that you need. Now, for your information, I just looked and I'm down about a fifth from top. That's how much ink it utilized to do the so-called priming or the ink recharge. So that, not, not bad. Other printers will use literally like a third to almost half of your ink. So this is actually quite good. A very welcome um, bit of news for me, actually, because I thought it was going to then utilize like half of the inks. That's not the case. Literally about a fifth. See that? That's how much ink I have. So the driver does show you. It shows you the... Uh, how much ink you have. Not bad. Here it comes. Yeah, standard quality seems to be fantastic. And it's printing very quickly. Absolutely no banding whatsoever. That's out of this world, folks. Out of this world. Let me switch over. 
to my main screen. Bam! How about that? And color wise is pretty much spot on. Pretty much. Yeah. If you get neutral gray tones that were neutral to begin with, you're going to get a neutral result, meaning a result that will not have any kind of a bias toward anything up outside of being neutral, let's just say. Uh, a gray will not look yellowish. A gray will not look pinkish or magenta-ish or reddish or bluish or whatever-ish. It just simply will not occur. So that is awesome. I am excited to know no end right now. And so from now on, it's just going to be further exploration of this printer. And I will have this video uploaded probably by tomorrow. Again, it'll be instant for you guys. Uh, come to my live streams because it'll always be sitting back here. Live streams occur on Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Time USA, whether it is daylight savings or not. So always 1 o'clock Eastern Time USA. We get people from all over the world watching us. We're going to be putting that printer to its spaces. By tomorrow, I will have some other papers I want to go ahead and test to see how accurate the color rendition is without having to create a, say, a custom profile. That's going to be a lot of fun to test. All right. I hope you enjoyed this set of video. It was long, but it was very detailed in real time. So you kind of get the idea what it takes to set this puppy up. Okay. I don't want to fool you guys into thinking, oh, it's just a couple of minutes and you don't know. That's not the case with about any printer installation out there, especially something as sophisticated as this tends to be. We're going to explore all of the different options. We're going to do some scanning. We're going to do some printing on disks. All kinds of stuff. Again, thank you so much. You can get this as soon as it becomes available in the Epson site. Get it because it will disappear like that. You might be able to get it at your local big box store or any of the computer oriented or electronic oriented shops. That's where I found mine at Office Max. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Happy printing with your 8550 from Epson. Bye-bye.